In recent times, lots of Africans within the diaspora are beginning to recognize all the amazing things Africa has to offer, from healing to business to a sense of belonging. In this video, we're going to interview an amazing couple who moved from America to Ghana recently and have experienced some pretty significant positive changes in their lives since. Let's get to know them. You really don't own anything in the, in the US. There was no hope left in America. We've had more, more people to visit us here than a whole year in the States. And mm -hmm. it was swollen in the States and no matter what we go down a little but here no longer oh. swollen breathing issues all gone they're all gone <laughs> and all you changed was your location yes change wow. your location America kind of gives you the mindset that you know Africa is lacking mm. and there's hungry babies yes. and, but it, it, it's nothing mm -hmm. like that yeah. like and everything is good in Ghana yeah. There's no lack for anything here. I just take advantage of all the fresh vegetables yeah. over here yeah. that you don't see in America. They're they're engineered mm -hmm. in America. Yeah. Like we didn't know oranges are really green. Mm -hmm. We thought they were orange. Yeah. So that's yeah. all you see. never see green orange <laughs> yeah. in America. Yeah. So you know, we were like, oh, this is the right way. This is what we're supposed to be eating. Yes, yes. yes. As you guys know, I love, love interviewing people that have migrated from the diaspora to Ghana. Today's video is no exception. I have a lovely, lovely couple that we're going to be getting to know. They've recently moved from America to Ghana just about two months ago. We're going to get to know about their journey, why they made a decision to move to Ghana, what's their story. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Make sure you give me a thumbs up. Let's get right. All right, so I've got Helen and I've got Timothy here with me. Can you guys introduce yourself to my subscribers? Yes. I'm Timothy Powell. I'm Helen Powell. We're glad to be here on the channel with Jasmine. We have watched her. She's Miss Jasmine to us, though. But we have watched yeah. her <laughs> and we're excited to be here and to you know give you guys kind of an inside of, of our story i just yeah. teased her i just told her i hear she's miss ghana yes you guys somebody said somebody calls me miss ghana in my comments all the time and she actually thought i had won a pageant at a point in time or something that is so funny so how long ago did you move to ghana we moved to ghana about two months ago in june the first week of june yeah of this June year, 6th. June 6th. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And prior to that, you had lived in America all your life? Oh. Okay. Yes, all of our lives, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So had you... in the military. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Had you ever visited any African country prior no. to that? No. 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 Wow. No you know, and the story goes, I think I, you know, was thinking about how about Many years ago, over 20 years ago, I was supposed to come to Ghana as a missionary. Okay. It was Tanzania and Ghana. And it did not happen because I fell ill, but I was working with a company who does kind of volunteer abroad programs. And the particular company, uh, Cross Cultural Solutions, everything was set to go. I had my you know living quarters, you know, I had where I was gonna be. And um, it didn't it didn't pan out, and so this is a dream realized twenty, you know, plus years later. Yeah. Yes. So it's amazing to be here on the continent. That's amazing. So at the time when it didn't happen, do you think it will happen in the future, or you kind of forgot about it? I, I kind of forgot about it. It was like always in the back of my mind. Yeah. But I was like, oh, that might not ever really be doable for me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And uh, my husband, you know, he was like. You know, never, you know, give up on what you, you know, want to do or be, you know, what you want to have happen in your life. And so, you know, the story goes is he is the inspiration for really getting us here this time around. Amazing. Yes. What was life like back for you in the U.S.? What, what was it like? Mm. <laughs> well, my husband has to laugh, Miss Jasmine, because... <laughs> It was really difficult, right? You know, we were considered a middle class family in the U.S., but so much is happening in the U.S. There's so many things that drove us away. There was the mass shootings, the killing of young black men and women being shot down in the streets. 
there was you know the economy there was so many different things that were going on there um, that we just didn't want to be part of anymore we just felt like you know there is something more for us to do and it, it just wasn't America America is was was hopeless mm. there was no hope left in America mm. we were retired and we thought okay we'll just you know sit back and kind of be retired and uh, live our life but truly we didn't have any anticipation of what could be mm. until we got to Ghana mm. yes so Timothy was in the military is that right yeah. and what about you what did you do um, I was in social sciences. Oh, okay. Yes, I had two master's degrees, one in political and justice studies, and okay. another one in criminal justice with legal emphasis. So I did a lot of work in uh, my background now is more restorative justice. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested in people's stories, right? So I like to do circle groups and mm -hmm. talk to people about their stories and you know, give ideas on reform and, and restorative justice and how we can change from going from a system of uh, adversarial justice to a system of more community-based mm -hmm. building around people, their stories, and around harm. And so when did you make the decision that you were going to move to Ghana? I'll, I'll let him speak on that. Um, one day I was looking at a I think a leader, and um, I look at YouTube, and I watch it for, I say, well, a day, and then two days went by, then three days went by, then I told Helen, I said, Helen, come here, I want you to watch this, look at this, and she kind of resonated with Helen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we started binging your channel mm -hmm. off the wheel. Alita and the Kings. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, the Kings. Yes, I've seen the Kings. The and the, yeah. those were the, that was the four that we started yeah. watching. We're like, oh my goodness, you know. And so we were like, in, in Tim's mind, his mind had been made up, but I had been going up and down the stairs for three days. Mm -hmm. He was upstairs watching TV. I would bring his food up, and I wasn't paying really any attention. And on the third day, I glanced over, I looked, because I kept hearing the same voices. And I'm like, looked, and I went back downstairs. And then he said, Helen, later on in the day, he said, Helen, come up, I want you to see something. And he he already knew that was what we were going to do. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was like, I'm on board. It sounds great. Let's do it. it you know, it's something I've always wanted to do. Yeah. And we felt the time was right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what about it? What did you see in those videos that made you feel like, I think we should go to God? Well... Uh, the thing I saw, <laughs> they said, uh, one thing that really got me, they said, you really, you really don't own anything in, you, in the U.S. Mm. I said, hey, we, we don't own anything. Mm. And then I said, well, they said, you come here and you buy land and then you keep it for so long and then you can renew it. Mm -hmm. And I said, well. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. Then I, I jumped on to the food. Mm -hmm. I said, hmm, the food. And they had mostly vegetables, you know. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh man, I gotta go there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you yeah. had a lot of Ghanaian food since being here? <laughs> just, a little bit. Just a little, just a little bit. bit. So, what, yeah. have you still been cooking stuff that you're used to already? or? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I've been cooking soul food. Okay. Miss Jasmine. So, soul food is like the food that is from the south in the States. Okay. It's got a distinct flavor. Mm -hmm. And so, it's, it's kind of a funny thing that happens. So, I cook just about every day. Okay. Um, and so, the guys downstairs, the security guy, our caretaker, and our, these are all our sons, and our building manager are like, Mommy, what are you cooking? And so they come up every day with their oh, bowls. That's and so nice. they, they, they eat dinner with us every day. Yeah. We put their little bowls together, they can take them down, they can stay up, whatever oh. they want to do. 
And so, yes, yeah, so I cook, but I just take advantage of all the fresh vegetables yeah. over here yeah. that you don't see in America. They're, they're engineered mm -hmm. in America. Yeah. Like, we didn't know oranges were really green. Mm -hmm. We thought they were orange. Yeah. So, that's yeah. all you see. You never see green orange <laughs> yeah. in America. Yeah. So, you know, we're like, oh, this is the right way. This is what we're supposed to be eating. Yes, yes, yes. I know, I know. And even the bananas are banana. so perfect. Yeah. Hey, yeah. They have but bruises uh, on them. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And then, you know? the thing, they're not, they're not really brewed. I mean, yeah. inside, when you open them it's up. Fine. It's, it's fine. Yeah, it's yeah, fine. It's just the skin that looks like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And the bananas in America are huge. Yes. Right? Have yes. you seen them? They're uh, like yes. about this big. And you're like, oh my goodness. And because when you see true bananas yeah. here, yes. you're like, bananas are really not that big. Yeah. There's something going on here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, after staying here for a while, you get used to how ginger looks. And then mm. you go back and you're like, is this ginger? Because they're yeah. so big yeah. and they're not dirty. You know the ones you buy here, you have to dirt on it. Yeah. 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 It, it's so different. Yeah. It's so different. Yeah. You started just you being immersed here. Yeah. And yeah. everything is good in God. Yeah. Yeah. There's no lack for anything here. You know, people think, oh, I'm not going to be able to get this, 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 and this. But really, it's all here. Yeah. It's all here. And uh, we have just been incredibly fortunate. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times uh, people uh, talk about uh, Africa. You think about the lions and the tigers and the bears and the weird <laughs> snakes. Uh, but you don't see that. Yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. It's portrayed very portrayed. differently to what yeah. it actually is. Yeah. That, that's really what, what really got me thinking. Mm -hmm. To believe that somebody would lie, to, that's what it caught mm -hmm. Yeah, America kind of gives you the mindset that, you know, Africa is lacking and mm -hmm. there's hungry babies mm -hmm. with lies mm -hmm. and yeah, you know, yeah. But it, it, it's nothing mm -hmm. like it's that. Nothing yeah. like that. And so we've been trying, we're on our own crusade to, to let people know the truth yeah. about Ghana mm -hmm. and Africa mm -hmm. and, um, you know, tell them it's it's a land of plenty. Mm. You know, please come. We want everybody to be on this journey. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's great. It's yeah. great to hear. So once you guys made the decision you wanted to move, what were some of the things you did in preparation to come? And yes, we did a lot of things to get to Ghana. So we had some family members who were, you know, for us going and some who were skeptical, mm -hmm. right? So you always have those naysayers, yeah. right? And people were like, oh, no, it's not what you think. You're going to get over there and you're going to be so disappointed. Yeah. And, you know, we heard all of that and we were determined that yeah. we wouldn't let any of that yeah. get in our way mm -hmm. and stop yeah. us from coming. And then we had the family members and friends that were very supportive yeah. and, um, yeah. you know, helped us on our journey. So we, we started kind of a campaign to raise money. We're retired people, mm -hmm. so we live off of fixed incomes, mm -hmm. and um, we had pretty much given up our works, work environment, um, but we still did a few things on the side, but nothing compared to what we're doing here. So anyhow, to get here, what we did was, we ended up writing books. Okay. I wrote a book called Diaspora in Return, okay. um, which is uh, on Amazon. I put together about two or three journals on Amazon, prayer journals, just journals for women to keep their thoughts and prayers in and just kind of keep a record of what's going on. And then Tim wrote a journal for men, um, yeah. and uh, we did that. And we also did like a donation campaign. So family and friends who wanted to donate to help us build our home. Oh, that's and, amazing. Yes, yeah. yes. And so we had a nice campaign going and people were like, Yes, you know, the people that were supportive were like, yes, you know, we'll help yeah. you guys out. We know what you guys are trying to do. We're about what you're, what you're trying to do. And so we did that, uh, the books and the journals. And um, we started a YouTube channel. Okay, so we got to tell you about this YouTube channel, right? <laughs> Okay. Okay, so this is not, this is an impromptu YouTube channel. Right. Right, so Tim was like, no, don't edit it. Don't edit it. Just, just go with it. We'll just take video and we'll go with it. Mm -hmm. And so it's 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 like it, it, nothing you've ever seen before. <laughs> so we are literally chronicling our journey here from, from, from the U.S. to Ghana. And we've got maybe about 20 or 25 videos out there. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we've been kind of... What's the channel called? It's called uh, Black Exodus. Okay. Black Exodus. Okay. 
Yes. And um, we, you know, I had a head wrap company that I started in the States, but I didn't really actually put it into work, per se, until I got here. So now that it's here, it's been flourishing, and we've been able to hire, you know, Ghanaians and employ Ghanaians to work on the wraps. Uh, and I source the material, but we've got people that are working with that. And my husband has started his business. Um, AP Math, Mathematics and Engineering Consulting. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So you do that online? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to do it online. Okay. So that was all in terms of making money so you can relocate here, basically. Yeah. So what are some of the practical things that you did as well? So with regards to finding a place, with regards to, I don't know, what else? Did you buy a car? Are you driving here? Like... No, okay. We All tried. Right. Okay. Yeah, got it. <laughs> Driving in Ghana is not for the oh faint hearted. Oh my it's not. Yeah, it's yeah. not. Oh my yeah. goodness. So, we, yes, that's exactly what we did was we um, we uh, had our brother, Mr. King, um, scout out some places for us. We gave him kind of the places we were interested in that we found online. And he went to take a look at those places. It just happened that the broker he was with mm -hmm. suggested this place okay. as, as an option. And so he came, he took video, and look, Daniel has his whole family in tow. Mm -hmm. So they're all like, you know, oh, this is a good one, this is a good one, thumbs up. You know, and so they found this place for us, and we immediately said, yes, this is the one, let's go ahead and get it. Mm -hmm. And we took it sight unseen except for his videos. Okay. So we were really excited about it, and... Um, you know, thought that it was really a great opportunity for us to, you know, to get our big toe in the water here in Ghana mm -hmm. and to establish our residence. Great. Yeah. Great. Did you ship stuff over? We mm -hmm. literally shipped two yeah. months ago, two and a half months ago, and our arrival was Friday. Oh, okay. So we go to the port on Friday to pick That's everything okay. up. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, so we shipped. We shipped just enough for this apartment. Um, but we have a four bedroom house in the state, so we have a lot more to ship once we go back. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you said you had bought land in some places as well. You were telling me this off camera. Where where have you bought land and who helped you do that? Did you do that when you came or you did that while you were over there? We did that all in the states. Oh, so we okay. were very proactive in the states, right? We were, when, when our decision was made to come to Ghana, we started looking for land. And uh, we first found Alita, mm -hmm. who had land in Cape Coast, mm -hmm. and we went with two plots in Cape Coast mm -hmm. uh, with her company, Ghana Consultations, and then we went with the Kings, who had land in Sahum, mm -hmm. and so we have two acres in Sahum, okay. and so we are currently building on the Sahum okay. location, um, a five-bedroom, okay. five-bath home which will be our home and will be enough land for the kids if they want to come and build, mm. they'll be able to do that as well. Right, right. Oh, you've got, this is the architectural drawing mm -hmm. and stuff. Oh, okay. So that's, that's it. Uh, that's it. It's one story. Okay. One yeah, story. it's all on one level. Yeah. Yeah, yeah one level. That's all. I mean, and my husband had a stroke mm -hmm. about 20 years ago, mm -hmm. and so it was important for us to find an apartment that had an elevator, mm -hmm. and it was important for us to build a one-story, mm -hmm. um, because he walks with a stick and um, has some difficulty with some deficits on his right side. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we wanted people to know that even with his challenges, mm -hmm. and he has several medical challenges, mm -hmm. but we were able to make this journey. And so people shouldn't be discouraged mm -hmm. about, you mm -hmm. know, coming and building and doing whatever yeah. they need because it's all customizable, yes. you know, yeah. or it's all accommodating, yes. you know. And yeah. so we were able to, you know, get this drawing mm -hmm. um, done over here mm -hmm. to translate into our house That's that amazing. we're building mm -hmm. here. That's yes. amazing. I think it's great that you talked about the whole um, being able to adapt even though you had some health issues yeah. because I think that's something that bothers a lot of people. They're yeah. really concerned about what that would look like should they move and yeah. all that. So if you're yeah. doing it, then it's mm -hmm. not impossible for anyone else to mm -hmm. do it. So how far are you with your construction? Well, we are about to break ground, so we okay. have got all of our paperwork done. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our builder who is ready to build. We made sure she has what she needs to get started. They were very much, you know, accommodating in terms of what we were looking for. 
and what they could do and um, understanding Tim's health challenges. Sure, sure. Yes. That's, yes. Great. That's great. That's great. So with regards to um, Tim's health challenges, was there anything that you guys had to do before you came just to make sure you were feeling comfortable and feeling like you're going to be okay when you're here? What are some of the things you did in preparation? Mm -hmm. So we did. So what I did was I started scouting out doctors here. Okay. And um, got from, you know, from local people, from people, diasporans that were here, mm -hmm. where are some clinics that we can go to, hospitals that are close by, yeah. and what can we do to make sure that Tim is in the best possible care mm -hmm. in Ghana. So when Tim was in care in the States, he was under the Veterans Administration because he's a disabled vet veteran. Right. But if people know VA, mm -hmm. you know, it's like an assembly line. Mm -hmm. Right, it's just one person after the other. Right, it's like we don't have time to really talk to you. Oh. We just want to give you some medicine. We want to medicate you, mm -hmm. and if you have any problems, go to ER. Oh, right. You know? okay. So there's no personal yeah. attachment to your patients, mm -hmm. and I was really uncomfortable with that mm -hmm. for him. And so, you know, I thought let's kind of be a little bit ahead of the game here, coming to Ghana. Let's look and see what's available. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. one of the specialists that Tim sees is a nephrologist for his kidneys. Mm -hmm. And I found two really good ones at Niaho. And okay. I'm probably not saying it right, Ms. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, Dr. Kumashi and Dr. Boima. Okay. And so we immediately got Tim in to see them and they were incredible. They talk with us for, I mean, 40, 45 minutes. Wow. You know, yeah. we're able to address all of our questions and yeah. issues and give them a plan of care. Mm. And we felt really yes. good about it, the best yep. we felt. And so the medical care is top notch here. Amazing. Just mm -hmm. amazing. And mm -hmm. so we planned for that. We also thought about medications and what does he need to, to have and what does he need to go in terms of making sure his health is on par with what he needs mm -hmm. and they were able to give us all of that information so we have been really excited uh, they've done a battery of tests on him labs everything and so we have been very blessed and very fortunate to be able to have him having the best care over that's here. really good to hear mm -hmm. that's really good to hear and how do you feel do you feel like you feel much better Tim, yeah. in comparison or do you feel yeah. like you're still the same my hand mm -hmm. it was it got swollen mm -hmm. it was swollen in its state and no matter what i did it would go down a little but here it's very no swollen no longer oh. swollen my foot no longer, my leg right here, my knees no longer swollen. Wow. Yeah. That's <laughs> no, really uh, good. Coughing, uh, breathing issues. All gone. They're all gone. Wow. All gone. <laughs> and all you changed was your location. Yes. Mm -hmm. Change wow. your location. Change my location. Mm -hmm. I can sleep all the way back. I, mm -hmm. I used to have to sit up like this and sleep. But now I can lay down on the pillow. Mm. That's really, mm. really good. And his yeah. blood pressure went from being about 150 in the States over like 101 mm -hmm. to 122 over 68. Wow. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. And it's been yeah. like that both it's times good. we have gone to see the doctors. Yeah. And so, yeah, so everything, God, everything in Ghana is good. Yeah. It has everything. 100%. Everything. Mm. I was going to ask, like, you know, um, has Ghana been what you, what you expected it to be and has it been good? But, I mean, we've already started off talking about the health, so that's amazing. But what, what else have you found? Um, has there been any surprises um, that you didn't expect? Um, well, for me, it, it's waiting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Waiting. Yeah. Yeah. but... But you just do it. Mm. Yeah. You're in a different state. Yeah. You're in a different country. Mm -hmm. So you learn to adjust. Yeah. I tell you, that's, that's one of the things that the military learned. Oh. That learned from the military mm -hmm. to adjust. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You can't change things. Mm -hmm. so. Just learn to adjust to it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you have a new level of patience since being yeah. here, do you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's good. And I think for me, the biggest challenge or adjustment was um, just, um, I think for the most part, it was really centered around everything in the States is microwave. 
Mm -hmm. Minority generation. Mm -hmm. Everything is quick. Mm -hmm. Everything is quick. It's kind of similar to what Tim is saying, but you know, getting rid of the Western mindset, really, because you think that um, because you want it, it's available right yeah. there. You know, mm -hmm. just because you want it, you can have it. And so I think the pace, the patience, and the pace of things in Ghana yeah. has really taught us to. Just chill out, mm -hmm. you know, just yes. relax, yes. you know, yes. and so, because everything in the States is quick, yes. you know, if you want food, you get in your car, you go through a drive through yeah. and so we realized there weren't really any drive throughs here, we were mm -hmm. like, maybe one or two, yeah, not that many. Okay, not that many. Yeah. Um, we were like, okay, so this is going to be an adjustment, so mm -hmm. it's similar to what Tim is saying, yeah, yes. it's just learning how to change the mindset mm -hmm. to, to, to understand you're someplace different and things happen differently. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's really good. What about socially? Have you met many other Ghanaians or other African Americans that have moved here um, and mingled with them? How has that been for you? We have. Yeah. We have met. We have, we've had more, more people to visit us here than a whole year in the States. Oh, wow. That's true. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nobody came to see us in the States. Mm. No. The kids would drop by every now and again. Yeah. But nobody came to visit us. We basically lived, you know, a yeah, retired, right. humble lifestyle, just us, me and him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so now when the guys come up for dinner, you know, they come get their foods, they come stay, they might come and visit. Um, you know, they come, we have a Ghanaian son that came and cooked jollof. Oh, yeah. I said, yeah. you've got to cook jollof for me so I can get it. Once I get it once, <laughs> I'm going to be good. I can make it from there. Yeah. So he came and cooked jollof with us. And so it's been, you know, it's been really, really good. I think in terms of, you know, just being able to mingle with Ghanaians mm. who are so warm and welcoming. And um, we, we don't want for a thing. You know, we, we don't even take the garbage out. They come, they come get the garbage. Mm -hmm. Mommy and Daddy, do you need anything? They put they put Tim in the car and make sure he gets in okay. Oh, that's really good. Just mm -hmm. wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so when we mingle with them, they come up. We have gone to see their places. And um, we also have some diasporans here, mm -hmm. other African Americans, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, Ms. Jasmine, that we, um, we talk to and meet up with. We are... Partner of what's called Diaspora HQ. I don't know. I've heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we just we just attended a meeting with them with that group, and we got a chance to meet some people because we were kind of newer to the group. Um, we also mingle with Dale from Off the Wheel. Yeah. Uh, he comes here. Oh gosh, I want to say once every week or oh, once every two lovely. weeks. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So we, we see Dale all the time. Uh, Mr. King has been here. Yeah. Um, we just yeah. have people popping in, our yeah. project manager, our builder, they come by and chat yeah. with us and yeah. sit with us and, you know, so it's just been people coming, our doors, like, all, and people yeah. know our doors always open, yeah. so yeah. we welcome yeah. people. Yeah. We have been, you know, branching out because we're meeting so many different people yeah. that yeah. there's so many opportunities in Ghana, yeah. you know, where there is a market for people to kind of, you know, just be who they thought they you know, could be yeah. and so it's just interesting because we have uh, a, a few business ideas mm -hmm. we have something coming out that's going to be very exciting that we worked on with Dale mm -hmm. uh, and so it's it's going to be a, a new market that we have not seen here okay. in Ghana yet and so mm -hmm. that's that's on the pike and then we have we're just really excited to so many possibilities here mm -hmm. in Ghana mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. oh the, we have a Ghanaian son uh, one of our sons, mm -hmm. I should say, and he has been instrumental. But we didn't know that in Ghana, everybody knows somebody mm -hmm. that can get you what you want, that can oh, do wait. things. Yeah. Oh, we didn't yeah. know that. So we were like, oh my goodness, this is really good. So all of the things that we have had pretty much done, the portrait, um, the the um, uh, seamstress that's working with me. Okay. Um, yeah. All of, all of this has come together, the, the business cards, mm -hmm. yeah. the fabrics that I'm sourcing, mm -hmm. who we go to at McCullough Market, where do I go, who do I visit, okay. all of that has been instrumental from you know our sons and from our Ghanaian yeah. Yeah. family mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. that have helped us kind of transition and get us going and so we have developed a business for that, so to oh. speak, so this is, so 
so that's going to be something different. Yes. Yeah. 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 So that diasporans coming over will have access to the same mm. people and services and things that we have. Mm. Everything is good. We were supposed to be retired, Miss Jasmine. <laughs> I know. We oh. Everybody <laughs> says that. <you> know? <laughs> the last couple I interviewed said the same thing. They were like, oh, yeah. we're going to come to Ghana and relax. And it's like, it doesn't really happen that way. But it does. It's still good, isn't it? It's yeah. great. It's, it's great because it's a new season, right? Yeah. And who would have thought, you mm -hmm. know, at the age that we're at, that mm -hmm. we would be you know settling in in Ghana and opportunities just coming to us or just our mind being open to the possibilities of doing something new yeah and so it's just different because in the States it's not like mm -hmm. that you can't just dream about a business and put it into plan and you know plan it and put it into place mm -hmm. because there's so many steps yeah there's so many steps there's so many processes mm -hmm. there's so much red tape mm -hmm. and businesses don't just happen over there you have to have money. Yeah. You have to have resources. Mm -hmm. You have to be in the right neighborhood. You have to be in the right, you know, vicinity. And so all of that matters. And here, Ghana is this beautiful open market for vendors. Yeah. You know, and people who come with ideas. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we're really excited about that. That's really good. That's really good. It's so nice mm -hmm. to hear your story. I just did a video not long ago talking about how effective community is in Ghana, you know. Mm -hmm. People, as you said, you know one person and they can link you to that person and then that. So it makes everything so much easier. You know, we can't, over here, you can't just go online and search like, like, I don't know, where do I find this? Because most things are not online. Mm -hmm. So you've got to know people to get to people. And so that social aspect of being here is just, it's just lovely. I think that's probably my favorite part yeah. of being here. My final question is, have you had any major challenges since being here? I don't think everything has been good. Okay. I don't think no. No. Okay. I don't think so. There's one probably little thing. Mm -hmm. So we, we have a car in the States and it has a lift on it for Tim okay. where he can have a scooter to ride around in. So our the scooter is on the back on top of the lift. And so we wanted to bring our car over and we were looking at pricing and people were telling us how much it would cost. And it was the prices were really, really high. Oh, so it was yeah. custom and duty. Mm -hmm. And so we were like, oh goodness, well how can we get a car over here? Mm -hmm. And then we said, well let's just look for cars here. And we did that, and but we didn't have much success. We didn't find oh, anything that was suitable. That was mm -hmm. suitable. That would hold his list, mm -hmm. and that would be able to to get us around. So we're still looking at some of the new dealers here, like Toyota, mm -hmm. and some of the manufacturers here to see if we can get something maybe customized for him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was our only little hiccup. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> was okay. that we didn't find anything right away. Yeah. And yeah. so we're like, so we uh, have you know just. Depending on our drivers mm -hmm. and our sons mm -hmm. and uh, uh, African Americans that are here yeah. to get yeah. us around. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that would be a sign to the dealers to start incorporating more things for people that yeah. might have some physical challenges and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Hey? Yeah. 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 Because I don't think there's enough of that. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. yeah. Thank you so much. That was such a lovely conversation. Mm -hmm. I would love to get a quick tour of your little cute apartment. Yes. So if you can show me around, yes. that'd be lovely. Yes. <laughs> we are huge coffee drinkers. I know oh, not so much okay. everybody in Ghana. Yeah, they no. like tea. Yes, yes. yes it's and it's tea. always black tea. They, it's black tea. Yeah, mostly black tea. Or, you really? know, Lipton? The tea yes, Lipton. Yeah, if they say tea, that's what they mean. Really? Most of the time, yeah. Okay, okay. So we have to get more into tea. <laughs> That will make you more good. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, sure. that's what we want. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but this is our kitchen. Mm -hmm. Just recently did dishes. We yeah. have a few things here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, nice stove, nice uh, stove top combination. Mm -hmm. This is our fruit and vegetable basket here mm -hmm. where we put all of our fresh fruits and vegetables when we go out to the market. Was this place what? finished? When you got it? No, okay. we bought everything. Okay. okay. And it's, it's funny you should ask Miss Jasmine because we're going to be, the stuff that's coming in on Friday, we're going to have to sell our couch and oh. probably do something with our bed because we didn't realize we were going to have to wait so long to get our items. Yeah. So we just purchase items that are going to be shipped. Okay. So we'll have duplicates. Okay. okay. So this takes you into kind of our little dining space here. Mm -hmm. And, um, and all of our meetings, all of the people that come see us, everybody knows this table. <laughs> but this is Tim's table. Oh, I see. Okay. Yes, it's just because he'll put it, when everybody leaves, 
he puts it right over here in this corner and he watches TV. Oh, and he right. Has all his books and everything out. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the living space. And this is our sectional couch. Mm -hmm. And we have a printer over there, which of course this printer would have cost about six hundred dollars so US, so six or seven hundred oh, US. Yeah. But we got it for I think how much money? Uh, two eighty. Two eighty eight oh, US okay. dollars. Okay. Yes. And then we're going to bring you into here. This is our one bedroom. This is our bedroom here. Mm -hmm. And um, we have little shelving units and our wardrobe here. It's nice and spacious. It is spacious. Yeah, spacious. It is. So we are leaving. So we're leaving next week. So you see all oh, our suitcases here. We are okay. packed to go back okay. to the States. Okay. We're just going to finish selling our house. Yeah. And come back and we'll be here for good. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then we have the bathroom here. Mm hmm Okay. And we bought this scale off of one of the street vendors. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can find everything on those streets. Yes. Everything. Oh, my yeah. They came up to the window. Yeah. And we were like, oh, we can get a scale yeah. on the street. <laughs> so we got the scale. So, yeah. what are you paying here per month? We pay here um, $650 US okay. dollars. Okay. And okay. then we pay an additional $1,200 per year mm -hmm. for the upkeep. Okay, so, yeah. Do you get cleaning and stuff or? We, we pay extra you pay for cleaning. Extra for cleaning. Okay. Yes. It's in a good location. It so. is. And we yeah. thought the price was right. Yeah. We thought it was a great price for what they had to yeah. offer. Yeah. And we still didn't want to go over budget because we knew we still had, had a mortgage at home. Mm -hmm. And um, we also knew we were building. Yeah. And so we wanted to get something that was affordable. This was done by a local Ghanaian artist. His name is Kwasi. Mm -hmm. He's with Million Productions. And this, we took an actual photo right over here in the living room of us. Just a quick little cell phone video, mm -hmm. little, little picture. Yeah. Yes, and he took the picture and he created this from the picture. It looks really, really good. Yes. What, what did he charge you for this? This was 100, 1,900 CDs. Oh, okay. 1,900 oh, CDs. Yeah. No, not bad. And it came with the frame. Okay. So that everything was included. Yes. Yeah, it looks really good. Thank you. Everybody says it's a likeness. However, I was telling you, Miss Jasmine. Yeah, I've heard you look young. I've heard you look younger. Who knew I was I need to keep this forever. Yeah, you do. Say that's what I look like that's right what I now. Look like right now. I always will look like that's that. That's right. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. That was really, really lovely. If people want to contact you, if people have questions about, you know, they want to move and maybe they need help or they want to ask you one or two things because they want to do what you've done, what's the best way for them to contact you? They can contact us by our YouTube channel, which is um, Black Exodus, spelled B-L-A-C-K-X-O-D-U-S. Mm -hmm. They can contact us on at uh, my head wrap business, which is uh, www.coveredbyaura.com. They can also find our information for our Ghana cell phone, 020-863-5539. Okay. See, when you're old, you have to get the glasses off to read, right? <laughs> All right, guys, that was so nice to meet. Um, Tim and uh, Helen, I hope you guys have enjoyed spending time with us today as much as I have. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. All their information will be in the description box below. Make sure you check out their YouTube channel and contact them if you have any questions or need any help or want to do exactly what they've done. Don't forget to follow your bliss soul. Now life is short. Follow your bliss, na ni payete. Follow your bliss, na di besi diaye. And follow your bliss, na dey ne mada. Take care, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Bye.